Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make the sparkling tennis bracelet. This is made with cuboid beads. Um, however, if you cannot get a hold of the cuboid, which I give you information on how to do that, you can do this with 4mm bicone crystals. And I have made a segment to show you that it can be done and it's still very pretty. So you can use a 4mm bicone Swarovski if you'd like. Or you can use these little cuboid crystals, which, like I said, I'll explain more about in the material list. Also, I wanted you to see the back of it. It's very pretty on the back, too. It's almost, well, it is reversible. So you can wear it on this side, or you can wear it on this side. It's very, very pretty. Let me put this on the wrist so you can see what it looks like. And this is what it looks like on the wrist. Let me turn it so you can see the clasping. This is the clasping. I just put a few dangles on a little piece of chain for an extender. And it is a very pretty piece. So let's go ahead and look at the material list and see what it takes to make this. Okay, for this project, we will be using 15080 and 11 seed beads. These are all Toho and they are all galvanized aluminum silver tone. We will also be using a four millimeter cuboid bead. These were sent to me by Shirley from Budget Bead Box. They're not quite a cube and they're not quite round. They're kind of in between the two. They're faceted really pretty and they work great in this design. So if you want to get some, I will post a link and you can get some from budgetbeadbox.com or you can use a four millimeter bicone crystal. That will work too. This design was made for these, but I did try it with a four millimeter bicone and it does work. So if you do not have any of these, you cannot get any of these, then know that you can still do this design and it still turns out really pretty. Then you're going to need a lobster claw clasp, a small piece of chain for an extender. Just make sure that your chain links are big enough to, to um, pass your lobster claw clasp through. Then you will need two jump rings and two wire guardians. So this is a wire guardian here. It just has two small loops on either mm -hmm. side are like little tubes that you can pass through in a divot on the top. That's a wire guardian. And then, of course, two jump rings also. And this is about six millimeter round. It doesn't have to be six millimeter round, but that's what I'm using. And then we are going to perhaps make a couple little dangles at the end of our chain just to make it pretty. And if you want to do that, you'll need some head pins. We will be using nano, or I will be using Nanofill 8 pound. You really don't want to use anything bigger than 8 pound Nanofill or 6 pound Fireline. Um, if you use a bigger thread, it's going to be very difficult to pass through your beads as many times as we need to, and it is more the angle that they're going to be laying at. But you will want to have a smaller thread, so six pound or eight six pound fire line, eight pound nano fill. This one works the best, and a size twelve beading needle. I use John James English beading needles. This is a size twelve. You may also want to have a pair of flat nose or chain nose pliers by, just in case you do get in a bind and need to pull your needle through. So that's what we will be using. And let's go ahead and get started with this project. To begin this project, start by adding a wingspan, perhaps two, onto your needle, if you can work with that much thread. I'm not going to use that much because I don't want you to watch me pull a ton of thread through the beads as I'm showing you the stitch. However, um, this project is very thread thirsty and you will need a lot of thread. You will need to extend your fire line or your nano fill during this process. And when you do extend that your fire line or your nano fill, make sure that you make the little blobs at the end of your thread as you're tying your square knot to extend very small. You do not want to have to try to pull a large knot through. It will not work well. So that being said, pick up six 110 seed beads onto your needle. Let me get you a little closer. 
After you have picked up six 11 O seed beads onto your needle, then you are going to bring them down to the end of your thread. You do not have to leave a long tail, just enough to hold on to a couple of inches. And then you're going to go back up through the first three 11 O seed beads that you put on to your thread. So just bring your needle through three beads, like so, and then pull your needle through, holding on to your tail, holding on to your beads, and just gently pull your thread through until you draw the second set of three beads on top of the first set of three beads, like so. And then travel through the second set. So you're coming out of the first set, go down into the second set of three beads. Then pull on your tail thread and pull on your working thread gently until they line up nicely next to each other like so. Let's get a little closer. That's what you should have. Now pick up three more 11 O seed beads on your needle. <clears throat> beads, not bees, like so. And you're coming out of this side of the second column of three. You're going to go into the opposite side of the second column of three and you're going to pull your needle through, holding on to those beads, and gently draw the third set down on top of the second set, like so. And then travel back up through the third set. So you're coming out of the second set, go into the third set. Make sure your beads are nice and tight and aligned nicely against each other like so. And then you're coming out of this third set. We're going to travel back into the second set and then back into the first set. So just ignore your tail. Go into the first set. And here we're going to prepare for our clasping simply because we're not going to sew back through with embellishments so we'll just have this side ready and it also secures everything so now you're coming out of this first set like so and you're holding your beads horizontally your tail is over here you're going to get one of your wire guardians out now if you're using a smaller wire guardian I think they come in two sizes either size is fine if you're using a smaller one open it up a little bit so it's a little wider than it was in your package just a little bit and then pick up and all you have to do is use your um, chain nose pliers or something just open it just a little bit then pick up an 11 O seed bead then we are going to pick up our wire guardian let me get you close for this we're going to pick up our wire guardian and we're going to go into one of the tubes on the wire guardian. And we're going to pull the thread through, drawing the bead that you put on your thread first and the wire guardian down to your piece. And turn it so that it lays on top of the beads with the tail hanging out. So like this. And then you're going to go into the opposite tube on the wire guardian like so just go through it hold your finger and your thumb over the wire guardian pull your thread through slowly and gently guiding that thread into the divot on the top of the wire guardian like so then give it a little tug to where it lays directly on top of the 11 seed bead and the 11 lays directly on top of the column of three 11 O's then pick up another 11 O seed bead, like so. And then go into the three beads on the tail side here. Hold on to your tail so it doesn't get tangled in. Hold on to your um, little 11 O and just pull. And this is what you should have. And this is why I say open your wire guardian just a little bit. You can wait until you get it on your piece too to make sure that it's open enough to where it lays on top of your 11 nose nicely like so. Now we're going to go back through the wire guardian to secure it. So we're coming out of this column of beads right here. We're going to go up into this 11 o and up into the wire guardian. 
like this. I'm going to hold on to the entire piece th with my thumb and my finger and pull my thread through so I don't pull anything out of whack. Give it a tiny tug and then I'm going to go through the other side of the wire guardian and the 11 0 seed bead like so. Again, I'm going to put my thumb and my finger together and guide my thread into the divot. And then go into the th set of three right here that your tail is hanging out of and pull that thread through. <clears throat> now I'm going to cut the tail off, but I'm not going to burn it down. I'm just going to cut it off. I can burn it down later if I don't get it close enough. And because my scissors are dull, I'm not getting it very close. But that's okay. I'm just going to get it out of my way. Now I'm going to begin my stitch. What we are doing is we are using a base of these three ladder stitches with three beads. And then we're going to create a little cradle for the bead to sit in like a little bezel. So we're coming out of this set of three 11 O's here. We're going to pick up an 8 0 seed bead and we're going to skip this middle set and go into the third set right here. And just hold your thumb and your finger on your piece so it doesn't get all bent out of shape. And just bring that 11 or that 8 0 seed bead down on top of the 11 0s, like so. Then turn your piece. You're coming out of this side now. We're going to do just the opposite. So we're going to pick up an 8 0 again. And we're going, we're coming out of these beads this time, we're going to go into these three. So we're skipping the middle set and we're going to go into the three that we anchored our clasping wire guardian on. And pull through. And now you can see I have a little bezel. It makes just a perfect little bezel. So now I'm going to go, I'm coming out of these three 11 0 seed beads, I'm going to go up into this 8 0 right here. And gently pull through. Your beads will kind of get out of whack as we do this, but we'll put them back together once we get through <clears throat> our crystal. So now I'm going to pick up one of my cuboid crystals, or you can pick up a 4 millimeter bicone crystal, but first you need some 15 O's. So pick up a 15 O and then pick up your crystal and then pick up a 15 O. And you're coming out of this side of the 8 O seed bead. You're going to go into the same side on the opposite 8 O seed bead and you're going to gently pull your thread through and then you're going to push your crystal into the bezel. Now, like I said, things are going to get out of whack. The first few are the hardest anyway. So just like this is fine. And then we're going to pick up a 15 0 seed bead and we're going to go into the crystal. So we're coming out of the 8 0. We're picking up a 15 0. We're going into the crystal and pulling the thread through. And then that side is anchored. So now we're coming out of this side. Pick up another 15 0 seed bead and go back into the 8 0 on this side. And that 15 0 isn't working with, and I'm using a size 12. So you see what I mean by passing through these beads. That one works. So I'm going to go into this 8 0 seed bead right here and pull this down. Now, just kind of a range of 15 0s, make everything nice and neat. This is what it should look like. Now we are going to go into the 11 0 seed beads right here. So we're coming out of the 8 0, go into the last column of three 11 0s. Hold your thumb and your finger over your piece and give a little tug. Make sure your 15 0s look nice because they can get kind of weird looking. So just a range of nice the best you can. They're not going to lay perfect. They're not, they're just not going to. But you want them to be nice and tight and pretty. And then we're going to start our next stitch. Now we're using, we're going to be working in three columns each time, but we're going to use the last column 
on our piece that we've already created as our first column of 11 O's. So then we have to create two more. So we're coming out of these three, pick up three, go into the opposite side, and pull those three down. And then go into the second three you put on. And they want to move around and do all kinds of weird stuff. Just go through them the best you can. Hold on to them between your thumb and your finger. Pull your thread through, like so. And then just pick up three more 11 O seed beads. And then go into the opposite side of the three 11 O's you're in already. And like I said, this gets a little shaky at first, but it's okay. Pull the three down. And now you will see at this point that the middle one wants to poof up. Push it down and then go back into the set that you just put on to secure it. Now you have them more secure on your thread. So just arrange them. And then as you do this, make sure you just push that middle one down if it wants to poof up. Then you're going to pick up an 8 seed bead. And you're going to come back to this very first set that we started in. Skip the middle set. You're coming out of the third set. Skip the middle set. Go into the set that's the last row on your first unit and pull that 8 seed bead down. And then pick up another 8 seed bead. And then skip the middle set. You're coming out of this one you're attached to. Then you're going to skip the middle set, go into the third set. Pull your 8 seed bead down. And as you can see, I have another little bezel. Now these get all out, all out of whack as we do this, but we'll tighten it as we put the crystal in. So go up into the 8 seed bead as gently as you can, holding on to your piece. Very gently, don't squash it with your thumb, but just very gently to guide everything. Now we're coming out of this 8-0. We're going to pick up a 15-0 seed bead and a crystal and a 15-0. Make sure you don't get your 11-0s and 15-0s mixed up because it'll look funny. So there we have 15-0 crystal, 15-0. We're coming out of this side. We're going to go into the same side on the opposite 8-0 seed bead and pull everything out of whack a little bit. It's okay. Just kind of straighten it up the best you can. When we pull back through with our next step, we'll straighten it up. So now we're coming out of this 8 Go into the crystal, pick up a 15 on your bead or on your needle first, and go into the bead, just the crystal, and pull. Pick up another 15 0 seed bead. And then go into the 8-0 on this side. So the opposite side from which you started. And pull that 15-0 down. Like so. Now kind of make sure everything looks pretty. And then you're going to go into the middle column of 11 0 seed beads. So the column that you attach this bead or this unit to. So we're going to go into these three in the middle here. You can turn it over if you need to and see there's one recessed right there. That's the one you're going into. Just the one that you attached to originally. Then once you've pulled through those three, go through the 8 seed bead. Once you're in the 8 seed bead, then you're going to come back through the, third, the very last column of 11 O's. Pull it nice and neat. Straighten out your 15 0 seed beads. Make sure everything looks pretty, like so. And let's begin one more unit. Pick up three 11 0 seed beads. Now remember, this column, the last column on your unit, is the first column of your next unit. So you will only need to add two columns of 311 O's. So pick up your 311 O's, go into the opposite side. 
of the 11 O's you're coming out of. Pull them down and then go into your new column. My thread is tangled, sorry. There we go. Hold on to them, pull your thread through. Gently and pull it straight through. Don't pull out to the side because if you do, you'll separate your columns. And then pick up three more 11 O seed beads. You're coming out of this column, you're going to go into the opposite side of that column and pull your new three 11 O's down. And then sew up into your new column of beads, like so. And now we're co coming out of the third column here. We're going to pick up an 8 O seed bead and we are going to go, we're going to skip the middle column and go into the first column the column that we are attaching to and pull your 8 O's seed bead down. The middle column of 11 O's will pucker, push it down. And then pick up an 8 O's seed bead and go into the, the third column of 11 O's, skipping the middle column. And now you have a bezel. Go up into the 8 O seed bead, pick up a 15 O seed bead, and a crystal, and a 15 O seed bead. And then you're going to go into the same side on the opposite 8 O, like so. Gently pull everything through. and pull that crystal down. And then pick up a 15 O seed bead, excuse me, and go back through the crystal. Holding on to the crystal as you go through it. And then pick up a 15 O seed bead and go into the opposite side of the 8 O from which you started here. and pull. And this is what you should have. Now we need to go into the column of 11 O seed beads from which we started our unit. So it would be the last column in the previous unit and the first column in this unit. So just go back into that. You're coming out of the 8 O. Go back into that column right there, right between the beads, and pull your thread through. Tighten it as you come through and then come through the 8 o on the opposite side here. Well, on the same side you're at now, but I'm going to move that 15 o a little and just go through this 8 o As I come through this 8 o I'm going to tighten my 11 o's or my 15 o's, excuse me, and push them up. Make sure they look good. Just arrange everything nice and neat and then come through the last set of 11 O's on your unit right here. And again, here you want to give a nice tug. Make sure everything looks good. 15 O is weird looking on this one, so I'm just going to fix it. And then you will begin again with another set of 11 O seed beads. This is very repetitious from this point. So we'll do one more set and then we'll go to length. So I pulled down three seed beads. I'm going up through those three. Pick up three more seed beads, 11 O's, and go into the opposite side from which you're coming out. Then go into the, la the set that you just created. I'm doing this one very close so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And then I am going to pick up an 8 O seed bead. I'm coming out of the third set. I'm going to skip the metal middle set and go into the set of beads that I'm attaching to, that I started my unit with. So it would be the last set on this unit and the first set on the unit I'm creating. 
pull the 8 so you'd be down, push the middle set of 11 O's down towards the back of your piece, and then pick up another 8 O seed bead and go into the last column. Pull the 8 O down, push that middle set down because it wants to pucker up, so just push it towards the back. Go into the 8 O seed bead that you're next to. You're coming out of this column, go into the 8 O, pick up a 15 O, a crystal, and a 15 O seed bead. Like so. And then you're going to go across into the opposite 8 O on the same side you're coming out of the 8 O you're coming out of. Pull that crystal down. And see, now that I'm getting more units, it's much easier to handle. The first three or four are the most difficult. After that, it becomes much easier to handle. Now, I'm coming out of this 8 0 I've picked up a 15 0 I'm going to go through my crystal. And pull my thread through. Make sure it doesn't tangle on anything. And I think that might have been my issue with the second set, but or with the previous set. But now my 15-0 has gone down nicely where I want it to be. Pick up another 15-0 and go into the 8-0 on the side you started in on the opposite side from which you started the actual embellishment. Like so. Now you're coming out of the 8-0. You're going to go into the column of beads that you began your unit with. So the column right between the two units. Pull through, go through the 8 0, and then go through your last column right here. And you're just going to continue making these units until you have 38 units or just make it an inch shorter than the length that you want it. So actually, not quite an inch. So let me show you. I am going to measure from the tip of the wire guardian here all the way to the end of my piece, and it's just slightly over six inches because I want mine to be around seven or just slightly over seven inches. So make the length a bracelet that you want according to the size of your wrist or whoever you're making it for. And just leave it a little bit, not quite an inch short of that length. And then we're coming out of this 11 O seed bead here. After we have finished the last unit, go through the 8 O, come down through your last column of 11 O seed beads like you would do to start a new, uh, a new unit. And we are just going to put another wire guardian on. Now, if you can, if you don't want to add any extra length, if your um, clasping will allow you, you can slide it on to your wire guarding. However, I cannot do that simply because my class will not fit onto my wire guardian. So I'm going to use a jump ring in between, which is going to add a little length to my bracelet. Now if I find it's too much, I'll use a smaller jump ring. I'll probably get a smaller jump ring anyway. But for the sake of showing you right now, I am going to pick up an 11 O seed bead first onto my needle. I'm going to go through one end of my wire guardian just like I did on the other side and I'm going to pull it down. Align it with my piece like so. Hold on to it and go into the second um, opening. And here you can see I didn't open my wire guardian. So before I do all this I'm just going to slightly open it. I can just pull on it a little bit or you can grab your chain nose or your flat nose and just very gently hold on to it and open it with your fingers like so. Just a little bit. Not much. Now that I have brought this 
Elevado down and the Wire Guardian down, I'm going to go into the other side of the Wire Guardian. I'm going to hold on to my Wire Guardian and pull my thread down into the divot, like so, and pull it until the 11 O seed bead lines up with the columns of 11 O's that you're um, attaching to, and then pick up an 11 O seed bead, like so and go into the opposite side of the column that you are attaching to. Go through all three beads in that column and pull your thread through until the wire guardian lands on top of the 11 O seed beads. And still, my wire guardian isn't quite open wide enough, so I'm going to adjust that. Make sure that the thread stays up in top of the divot. And then, sew up through the 11 O's. So you're coming out of this column of three 11 O's here. Sew up through the 11 O and the wire guardian. Pull your thread through. And then again go into the opposite side into the 11 O also. So go through the wire guardian and the 11 O. Pull your thread through. And then go back into the three 11 O seed beads that you started in. line everything up nice. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and sew through one more time and I think I'm going to just to make sure I have extra security here. Make sure your thread goes into the divot on top. Go through the three 11 O's you're um, attaching to and see now I'm getting a little bit of resistance so I'm going to use my flat nose pliers to pull my needle through and now I'm going to turn my piece over and I am just going to sew through a couple of these columns and secure my thread so I'm going to I'm coming out of this column of three I'm going to go into the middle column here and then I'm going to go down into the recessed third column here And the beads are laying kind of funny, so just manipulate your way through there. And then there's a little thread bridge right between these 11 O's and the 8 O. And I'm going to tie a little knot. Let me get you close. I'm going to go right under this thread bridge. Pull my thread into a loop. Pass my needle through and gently pull down until I have created a knot. And then I am going to go into this next column of beads here. And then sew down into this one. And then I'm going to go under this thread bridge and tie another knot. And you can do this as many times as you want. Just sewing down the column and securing it. Just make sure when you pull your knot down, you're not distorting anything. Make it very small, very neat, and then go into your next column. And then your next column. And I am going to call this good. Right here. And I'm going to cut my thread off. And then I am going to burn down the extra piece I left. Make sure you don't get any of your other threads. Just melt it down gently. And that is what it should look like. Okay, so now that I have finished my bracelet, I'm just going to set it aside and I'm going to grab the little piece of chain that I told you you would need at the beginning of the video and I'm going to make a little extender but I want to decorate the end of my extender so I'm going to grab a head pin I'm going to slide it 
crystal onto my head pin and then I'm just going to bend the head pin over the top of the crystal like so and then I am going to cut the head pin about a quarter of an inch and then I am going to grab my round nose pliers I'm going to grab the very end of this um, wire that I cut and I'm just going to go a little ways down my round nose pliers because I don't want a big circle maybe just you know, right about there and I'm going to turn a circle like so now I can take my straight nose pliers and I can close that circle like so and then I can twist it to where it's open like this we get you just a little closer and then I'm going to grab my piece of chain I'm going to put my little circle onto that piece of chain and then I'm going to twist it closed again and now I have a pretty little crystal on the end of my piece of chain I'm going to make a couple of more a couple more and put it on the next link so I'm going to put one here and one here on the next link so that I have a couple of crystals I'll show you I've already got one prepared So this is how I have finished off my chain. I just put three little loops uh, um, it, on head pins, three little crystals, like so. One on the very last chain and two on either side of the second chain link. And now I am just going to open this chain with my chain nose pliers and my flat nose pliers. Just twisting it open, like so. And then I'm going to grab the end of my bracelet and put this onto the wire guardian and then again twist it closed. Now I have a little extender for my clasping. So I can clasp into any one of these. And just make sure with your chain that the lobster claw that you have chosen goes into the chain well so you can hook it anywhere you want make sure it goes into each or goes into the links nice and smoothly and then take it off of there and what I'm going to do is I've decided instead of using a great big um, jump ring I'm just going to grab one link of my chain so I've already got one off I just took one link of my chain off of my chain and I am going to use it as a jump ring so it matches the other end and it's not so big so I'm just going to put my lobster claw onto that link of chain I'm going to put the link of chain on to the opposite end on the wire guardian and again I'm going to twist it shut that link make sure it's closed tightly and now I have a really pretty finished bracelet and I will show you what it looks like on and as you can see I have gone ahead and attached it all the way to the very first chain link on mine here since um, I made this actually the right length for my wrist but if I wanted to wear it a little looser then I could wear it a little looser or if somebody bigger buys it or you've made it for somebody and you're not sure the size of their wrist you have some adjustment here and I think the dangles are really cute too and this is what the piece looks like on the wrist and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you make yourself one have fun bye bye